This is just a presentation on a disorder called ataxia telangiectasia, which is also shortened to AT. It is a neurological disorder that I first actually learned about when I met my niece a little bit more than nine years ago. Throughout this presentation, you will see pictures of two girls who will always be very special to me and whose lives were forever impacted by AT. I want to begin with a short video just to give you a better picture of what AT actually Babies born with AT might actually appear very typical during their first year of life, and a lot of times they aren't actually noticing any symptoms until after their first birthday. The most prominent physical symptom that you might notice are going to be large or enlarged blood vessels that are in the whites of the eyes. You may also notice these enlarged vessels on other parts of the face, so like in the cheeks or in the area just below the eyes. Another physical characteristic that's very important to be aware of is that these children often have very impaired immune systems. So they're much more likely to develop a lot of different types of respiratory infections like pneumonia, and these aren't often readily treated by typical antibiotics. They're oftentimes in need of specialized treatments for the types of pneumonia that they develop. In addition to the increased risk of infection, these children also have an increased likelihood of certain types of cancer, like lymphoma and leukemia. The primary developmental characteristic that you're going to get with AT is something called ataxia. This impacts both gross and fine motor skills, so both hand skills and bigger movements like running, walking, or jumping. Typically, a child is going to look wobbly or jerky during movements. Oftentimes, you will also hear slurred speech. Motor skills actually become more impaired over time, even if the child does get therapy or medical interventions. Typically speaking, these children are in wheelchairs by the time they are in preteens, even if they were walking previously. As practitioners, we would want to be very cautious because of the oral motor issues because they are at higher risk for choking or for aspirating on food and liquids, and we would not want to do anything that might accidentally lead to developing pneumonia. Because AT is progressive, it actually gets worse over time. There are certain medical treatments, like IVIG, that's going to try to preventatively it decreased the risk of some infections or other conditions, and there's even special antibiotics that treat infections when they develop. A child may also be placed on chemotherapy if they develop the types of cancer such as lymphoma or leukemia. Children with AT may get therapy services like physical therapy and occupational therapy, which may help to increase flexibility or help the family to cope with changes in motor skills. They may also get speech therapy to help compensate for the slurred speech and make up other ways for them to communicate if it becomes too difficult to do so through regular speech. Typically, children only are going to live in the, into their teens or early 20s, and it's actually not uncommon for them to pass away much earlier if their immune system is more impaired or if they develop cancer much earlier.
In 2000, the AT Children's Project knew of about 350 children living with ataxia telangiectasia, but it's thought to be very underdiagnosed, and the number's thought to be very much higher than that now. It affects both sexes, all racial and ethnic groups, and any education and socioeconomic background equally, so it doesn't discriminate against anyone. Overall, the rate is thought to be about 1 in 40,000 births. Um, but as we said before, that's just an estimate. You would read anywhere between 1 in 40,000 to 1 in 100,000. Formal diagnosis can often be a long pro process for families if there's no previous history of AT diagnosed in the family. It may initially be misdiagnosed as a certain form of cerebral palsy because the ataxia or movement issues may look a lot like cerebral palsy. But the difference is that cerebral palsy is not degenerative, so CP wouldn't get worse. So when the child's symptoms get worse over time, the family or the doctors usually grow concerned and begin to order different tests. At this point, if enough of the physical things that you'll see on this slide begin to show up, then they may actually refer the family for specific genetic testing. It's a different story if you realize that AT runs in your family. If a family has already had a child with AT, or if you have a close relative that's had a child with AT, you may actually opt to do prenatal testing to determine if the child that you're going to have has AT or not. So a test like the alpha beta protein test, which is a simple blood test that you can do early on in pregnancy, actually detects the AT disorder with about 95% accuracy. Because AT's cause is genetic, we are beginning to learn a little bit more about it. Right now, about 1 in 200 people are thought to carry the recessive gene that is associated with chromosome 11. So that means about 2.5 million people in the U.S. are thought to be carriers. And so AT is what's called an autosomal recessive disorder. This means that in order for a child to have the symptoms of AT, both parents must carry that recessive gene. And then it becomes a more dominant or present gene in the child with AT. We know that what happens is that there is damage or an inappropriate chromosome 11, and then this actually prevents the production of a protein called ATM. We also know that part of ATM's role is to help to repair cells that are damaged. And so if the body isn't able to repair damaged cells, the cells just die. And so that cell death over time is what leads to the ataxia in these children, and it's what leads to the impaired immune system and increased risk of developing a lot of different types of cancer. What I found really impressive about AT is the amazing supports that are out there for families. I think the most impressive one that I found was Ataxia Telangiectasia Children's Project, or ATCP.org. It had amazing resources, such as a handbook for families, links to clinics around the United States, and a network of families that are looking for a cure and for treatment. Another great website that had supports um, was a clinic based at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and they actually run a medical medical clinic that can test children for AT, and they're doing lots of research on various treatments for the symptoms of AT. They have been a big player in actually determining what was causing AT to begin with, and so they had lots of good information for both parents and families and for practitioners. And then finally, there's the National Ataxia Foundation. And while it's not really specific to ataxia telangiectasia, it did have lots of good resources about what it's like to live with ataxia or what it's like to have a child with ataxia. So as families are dealing with some of the coordination issues and some of the developmental issues, there were good handouts and good strategies for, for how to deal with this at home. So I just want to thank you for um, listening to my presentation. Here are a couple of the great resources that I found. 
And um, I hope that you have a chance to delve through and learn more about AT. Thank you very much.